When it comes to choosing diplomatic, strategic and military partners, the government of Niger regrets the willingness of the American delegation to deny the sovereign people of Niger the right to choose its partners and the types of partnerships likely to help it to truly fight terrorism. Even though the United States of America has unilaterally decided to suspend all cooperation between our two countries, the government of Niger therefore strongly denounces the condescending attitude combined with the threat of reprisals by the head of the American delegation against the government and the people of Niger. Without telling the military junta of Niger, a delegation from the United States reached Niger on high alert. Nobody knew about that and the government of Niger was not informed about the arrival and who was coming in the delegation. But the seriousness was obvious, and Niger's officials had the idea that the delegation was coming to threaten the military junta. The president of Niger, General Abdurrahmane Chiani, did not like that, and what he did next shocked everyone. But what warnings did the American delegation bring, and how they were toned down and shown their true place by Niger's junta? Let's know about that in this video. So, why did the U.S. delegation visit Niger? Well, recent developments in Niger have stirred tensions between the United States and the African nation, sparked by the arrival of a U.S. delegation. The crux of the matter lies in Niger's directive for U.S. troops to vacate the country and dismantle their military base. This decision, issued by the Niger junta, sparked discussions and garnered the attention of the U.S. delegation, which seeks to address the situation. Central to the dispute are issues of sovereignty and mutual respect among nations. Niger, like many African countries, prioritizes its autonomy in making decisions that affect its territory and citizens. The directive to U.S. troops reflects Niger's desire to assert control over its military presence and uphold its independence in foreign affairs. The government of Niger, taking into account the aspirations and interests of its people, resolves in all responsibility to denounce with immediate effect the agreement relating to the status of United States military personnel and civilian employees of the U.S. Department of Defense on the territory of the Republic of Niger. Diplomatic correspondence will be sent to the American side to this effect. However, the approach taken by the U.S. delegation has drawn criticism. Instead of engaging in diplomatic dialogue and respecting Niger's sovereignty, the delegation's conduct has been viewed as condescending, accompanied by threats of sanctions. This approach not only disregards diplomatic norms, but also perpetuates a sense of American exceptionalism and disrespect for the autonomy of other nations. The actions of the U.S. delegation shed light on broader issues within U.S. foreign policy. Their unannounced arrival and expectation of compliance with their demands demonstrate a disregard for diplomatic protocols and the principles of mutual respect and cooperation. Furthermore, the prospect of sanctions has heightened tensions, impeding constructive dialogue and exacerbating existing divisions between the two parties. In this context, the behavior of the U.S. delegation aligns with a legacy of Western interventionism in Africa. Characterized by paternalism and self-interest at the expense of African sovereignty and well-being, such attitudes perpetuate a cycle of exploitation and subjugation, hindering efforts for equality and cooperation on the world stage. According to reports during the visit, the delegation exceeded the boundaries of diplomatic discourse by openly warning the Niger junta of severe consequences if they failed to comply with U.S. demands regarding the presence of American troops in the country. These actions by the U.S. delegation have triggered widespread apprehension and condemnation both domestically within Niger and on the international stage. No matter what, the delegation has no power to dictate what Niger's junta should do. The warning issued by the delegation, which included threats of sanctions and potential repercussions for the people of Niger, sheds light on a troubling attitude towards African nations and their sovereignty. The delegation did not shy away from threatening the people of Niger even. At the heart of the matter lies the principle of sovereignty, which is crucial for the autonomy and self-determination of nations. Niger, like any sovereign state, has the right to make decisions regarding its territory and the presence of foreign military forces within its borders. The attempts by the U.S. delegation to impose their will on Niger and dictate terms constitute a clear violation of this principle and undermine the sovereignty of the country. Furthermore, 
The tone and language used by the U.S. delegation during their visit to Niger are deeply troubling. By resorting to threats and coercion, rather than engaging in constructive dialogue and negotiation, the delegation disregarded diplomatic norms and the principles of mutual respect and cooperation. Such behavior not only undermines the essence of diplomacy, but also perpetuates a harmful narrative of Western dominance and African subservience. Moreover, the warning issued by the U.S. delegation to the Niger junta sends a troubling message about the priorities and values of U.S. foreign policy. By prioritizing its own interests over the sovereignty and well-being of African nations, the United States undermines its credibility as a proponent of democracy, human rights, and international cooperation. But how did the Niger junta treat the U.S. delegation? The recent interaction between the U.S. delegation and the Niger junta has unfolded amid rising tensions and strained diplomacy. The delegation's manners, marked by a tone of condescension and backed by threats, have seriously strained relations and cast a shadow over prospects for ongoing military cooperation between the two nations. Consequently, the Niger junta firmly rejected attempts by the delegation to meet with President Chiani, highlighting a strong opposition to external interference and a commitment to safeguarding Niger's sovereignty. The conduct of the U.S. delegation has prompted sharp criticism from Nigerian authorities, who view their behavior as disrespectful and domineering. Such actions have effectively shut the door on any constructive discussions regarding the continuation of military cooperation. The junta's decision to deny the U.S. delegation access to President Chiani underscores Niger's determination to defend its autonomy and safeguard its national interests. By refusing to engage with representatives who adopt an aggressive and dismissive stance, Niger sends a clear message that it will not tolerate encroachments on its sovereignty or allow external powers to dictate its internal affairs. Furthermore, the junta's refusal to entertain discussions concerning the presence of U.S. troops in Niger demonstrates the commitment to preserving the country's territorial integrity and independence. Niger's leaders have unequivocally stated that any negotiations must be conducted on equal terms with full respect for the nation's sovereignty and dignity. In taking this principled stand, Niger reaffirms its status as a sovereign entity capable of defending its rights and interests on the world stage. The junta's refusal to bow to external pressure serves as a powerful reminder that, regardless of their size or geopolitical importance, all nations deserve to be treated with dignity and respect in international relations. But it did not end there. Niger made it clear that it stands firm on its sovereignty. During the meetings, Niger reiterated that it does not adhere to directives imposed by external forces, including the U.S. This reaffirmed Niger's commitment to charting its own course based on its unique circumstances and interests. At the heart of Niger's position is a rejection of what it sees as an imperial mentality from certain quarters within the U.S. government. The idea of imposing policies without considering African realities has been met with strong opposition. Niger, like other African nations, seeks genuine partnerships based on mutual respect rather than one-sided impositions. Niger's warning to the U.S. carries weight, emphasizing that any attempts to coerce or threaten the nation will be met with decisive action. This reflects Niger's determination to defend its sovereignty against external interference, regardless of the source. Additionally, Niger's willingness to face potential repercussions, including sanctions, underscores its commitment to its principles. While the U.S. has historically used sanctions as a tool of coercion, Niger's defiance challenges the efficacy and morality of such measures. Niger's position must be understood within the broader context of African agency and self-determination. Across the continent, there is a growing momentum towards asserting sovereignty and rejecting external dictates, marking a shift in African politics towards genuine partnership and cooperation. The diplomatic exchange between the U.S. and Niger exemplifies larger global power dynamics, highlighting the complexities of international relations. Niger's firm stance sends a message not only to the U.S., but to the international community. Respect our sovereignty or face consequences. At this point, the United States has to be careful. It's because gone are the days when the U.S. orders were followed without questions. Now, the United States has to learn from and reject the advice given by its military officials in the Pentagon. They don't know the ground realities of African nations. Therefore, their policy options cannot be imposed on Africa. 
Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. But what shocking did Niger's prime minister say about the United States and the broken military ties? In an interview, Prime Minister Ali Mohamed Lamine Zaini of Junta-led Niger revealed that the nation terminated its military relations with the United States in March after facing threats of sanctions. Niamey officially declared this decision in mid-March, ending its military cooperation agreement with Washington shortly after a U.S. delegation left the Sahelian country. On cooperation between the two countries, in particular military cooperation and the fight against terrorists, the U.S. presence on the territory of the Republic of Niger is illegal and violates all the constitutional and democratic rules which would require the sovereign people, in particular, through its elected representatives, to be consulted on the installation of a foreign army on its territory. Niger has served as a pivotal hub for counter-terrorism operations in West Africa, notably housing a significant U.S. drone base near Agadez City. Zaina disclosed that Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs Mali Fee, who led the visiting delegation, cautioned Niamey against potential sanctions if Niger engaged in a uranium selling agreement with Iran. Expressing his discontent with Fee's approach, Zaina recounted his response, stating that first, they have come here to threaten us in our country. That is unacceptable. And they have come here to tell us with whom we can have relationships, which is also unacceptable and they have done it all with a condescending tone and a lack of respect. When questioned about Zane's account, State Department spokesman Vedant Patel did not challenge it. Instead, he stressed that Fee presented the junta with a choice, reflecting a coordinated U.S. government stance. Patel clarified that the decision to withdraw over 1,000 American personnel was made with regard to democratic principles and national security interests. Ongoing discussions between the United States and Niger revolve around the withdrawal. Zaina criticized the American presence, citing instances where terrorists attacked Niger while U.S. forces remained passive. Niger's prime minister made it clear that now, the United States has been left with no option to use against Niger. It could only threaten and put sanctions, which Niger is now ready to face. However, Niger will never accept to submit its sovereignty and follow orders coming from the Pentagon in return for not putting sanctions. Niger's junta has now decided that no matter what the United States says, it will have relations with whoever state it likes. Whether it's Iran, Russia, or China, the United States will never be given any authority to dictate Niger who should be its enemies and who should be its friends. But what lessons did the U.S. learn? Well, after Niger's junta showed its true power and declared no talks would be done on letting the U.S. troops stay, the United States felt its wings clipped. The United States realized nothing would work after the delegation ruined the narrow chances of talks focused on letting the U.S. troops stay. Therefore, recently, officials from the United States and Niger convened in Niamey for extended high-level discussions aimed at coordinating the withdrawal of all American military forces from Niger. Christopher Meyer, the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Special Operations and Low-Intensity Conflict, along with Lieutenant General Dagvin Anderson, Director for Joint Force Development, engaged in talks with members of Niger's new government, known as the National Council for Safeguarding the Homeland, or CNSP. Initial reports suggested that the discussions concluded on Thursday. However, both U.S. and Nigerian officials chose to extend the talks into Friday, according to a U.S. defense official who spoke anonymously. Leaders from both nations agreed to a phased withdrawal of American forces from Niger, with plans to commence as soon as it's feasible in the coming months, as conveyed by another U.S. official. The official further indicated that participants in this week's negotiations affirmed protections and immunities for U.S. personnel and approved diplomatic clearances for withdrawal flights to ensure smooth transitions as American forces depart. The negotiations were conducted with a foundation of mutual respect according to the official, something that cannot be trusted. The CNSP underscored that the meeting occurred two months after Niger terminated its military basing agreements with the United States and aimed to guarantee that this withdrawal takes place in the best possible conditions, ensuring order, security, and compliance with set deadlines. According to two U.S. officials who spoke anonymously, 
approximately 900 U.S. military personnel are stationed in Niger, including active duty, civilians, and contractors. Most of these personnel have remained in the country beyond their planned deployment end dates as the details for their withdrawal are finalized. But how has the U.S. lost all in Niger? Earlier, Niger's Prime Minister, Ali Lamine Zaini, revealed that the United States has threatened sanctions if Niger proceeds with a deal to sell uranium to Iran. This warning was perceived as a direct challenge to Niger's economic independence, prompting a resolute reaction. Rather than bowing to external demands, Niger chose to assert its autonomy by severing military ties with the U.S., effectively closing off a potential avenue for meddling. When it comes to choosing diplomatic, strategic and military partners, the government of Niger regrets the willingness of the American delegation to deny the sovereign people of Niger the right to choose its partners and the types of partnerships likely to help it to truly fight terrorism. Even though the United States of America has unilaterally decided to suspend all cooperation between our two countries, the government of Niger therefore strongly denounces the condescending attitude combined with the threat of reprisals by the head of the American delegation against the government and the people of Niger. The presence of U.S. troops in Niger had long been contentious, with concerns raised about their impact on domestic affairs. By ending this military partnership, Niger aimed to reclaim full control over its national security and eliminate external influence. This action mirrored a broader sentiment across Africa, where nations increasingly guard against foreign military presence and its implications for sovereignty. Moreover, Niger's decision signaled a shift in its foreign policy stance. Traditionally reliant on Western support for military matters, Niger opted for a more independent path, unshackled from external constraints. This adjustment reflected a maturation in Niger's diplomatic approach and an acknowledgement of its role in shaping its own destiny. The timing of Niger's decision was notable, occurring amidst a political transition following a military coup. With a new leadership in place, Niger sought to solidify its authority and shield itself from outside pressures. By cutting off ties with the U.S. military, Niger aimed to preempt foreign interference in its governance. And now, Niger has started exercising its authority, directly challenging the United States, seeing directly in its eyes. Therefore, Le Monde reported that despite international pressure, Niger's military government still intends to proceed with the sale of hundreds of tons of refined uranium, commonly known as yellow cake, to Iran. What's more, the United States is seeing a shift in its strategic sway, with Russia and Iran gaining ground in Iran. This is being deliberately done by Niger, and it's a genius plan. Instead of confronting the United States alone, Niger has decided to open doors for countries that intimidate the United States, which are Russia and Iran. Now the U.S. influence in Niger has ended. The withdrawal of U.S. troops represents more than just a reduction in military presence. It signifies a substantial decline in American sway within Niger's political and strategic arenas. With the absence of U.S. military forces, the Nigerian junta now operates with a newfound sense of independence, unburdened by the constraints and pressures previously imposed by the United States. This newfound autonomy empowers Niger to pursue its own interests without fear of retaliation or interference from Washington. A direct result of this shift is Niger's newfound ability to form partnerships and alliances based on its own strategic priorities rather than being dictated by external powers like the United States. Historically, American influence in Niger often dictated the nation's foreign policy decisions, aligning them closely with U.S. interests. However, with the departure of U.S. troops, Niger finds itself liberated from these constraints, opening up opportunities for potential collaborations with nations that the U.S. consider its enemies. One of the most significant outcomes of this newfound autonomy is Niger's willingness to engage in trade agreements, particularly concerning its abundant uranium reserves. Previously, Niger's uranium exports were predominantly directed towards Europe and the United States, serving as a crucial component of their energy strategies. However, with the diminishing influence of the U.S., Niger now feels emboldened to diversify its trading partners, including forging ties with countries like Iran and Russia. It should be noted that uranium is not only used for energy, but for nuclear weapon development. The prospect of Niger selling uranium to Iran and Russia marks a significant departure from past practices 
and sends a clear message to the United States. By pursuing such transactions, Niger not only secures economic benefits, but also reaffirms its sovereignty and independence in the face of perceived American dominance. This shift in uranium sales not only highlights Niger's autonomy, but also serves as a deliberate rejection of U.S. policies and attitudes towards Niger and its people. What do you think? Did Niger's military junta do the right thing by openly exposing the United States? Isn't it true that if the U.S. is threatening Niger, it would also be threatening other African states? In the comment section right below, share your thoughts on what Niger should do next to send a strong and clear message to the U.S. that Niger would not back down. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.